Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Titanic Adventure Out of Time here on the Game Professor channel. I am your host, the Game Professor, and last time we got our mission from Penny Pringle. We met with Georgia, a former love interest of ours, and now we're about to meet... But my dear, it's Daisy. Daisy, Daisy Cashmore. Cashmore. Surely you remember. You a naughty thing. Don't think I didn't know you'd snuck on it, Cherbourg. Smethels told me all about it. The old boy's always dripping with news. I heard about Lord and Lady Lambeth. <laughs> Ruined utterly. Mm. Scarcely enough left for appearances, I'm told. I always liked Georgia. Married Charles for his name and his fortune, sensible girl. But she's made her nest. Now she must live in it. Well. So, Daisy is a gossip spinster um quite simply but she makes things a little bit interesting so um could we get to the point please daisy my dear i have a little favor a tiny 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 one um with pleasure tonight at dinner a man i don't know was making eyes at me be an absolute darling and find out who he is and how do you expect me to do that Look him up in the passenger list. All I know are his initials. G Q C. The list mm. someplace. Find it. I'll wait right here. Ta. All right. And ultimately what this does is it sets up yet another side uh, quest for us within this game. You don't need to do everything in this game in order to com to get to reach a good ending. There are, uh, there are very specific parameters to reach a good ending. I'm going to be trying to get the best ending. In large part because I think that it provides some of the most interesting socio-political commentary. But I'm not going to freak out if we don't get the best ending. Uh, but let's talk to Max here. He will introduce us to... Let me introduce you to Buick Riviera. Remember, he's French, and you know what they're like. Come here. Good evening, mon ami. Buick Riviera welcomes you to the tables. I am always delighted to play with friends of Max. You look familiar. We make a meeting before. Dovi, the casino at Monaco, New Mexico. I lived there once, in Diamondback. Such a town. So, have we met? And he is a reference to the other game that Cyberflix put out uh, the year before this game called Dust. Uh, he is also a character that exists when that. That's where Diamondback New Mexico comes from. And I am going to say yes, we met at the Hard Drive Saloon, which is yet another reference. Uh, I have not actually played Dust, but vrai. I like the cards. Then we shall use my special cards. Good luck! You'll need it. Just kind of fun. And ultimately, this yeah, is... Blackjack. This is just a very simple blackjack minigame. And it literally is just playing blackjack. So, if you don't uh, say the... Uh, if, you, if you say that, no, we haven't met before, it's just the Titanic standard playing cards. Which are still really pretty, but I like these. So, we have... 14. Uh, I'll hit. And I will stay with that. Excellent. You are the winner. Magnifique. Another hand, mon ami? No, I'm good for now. Bonne chance, mon ami. Good night. All right. So, you can just kind of play blackjack with him at any time. There is a point where you can use it to uh, help you get off the ship while it's sinking. But let's go see who this lady I is. I don't know you, nor do I want to. Leave me or I shall summon a steward. Um, it's unusual to see a woman smoking. Tell me, do you approve of women who smoke? Um, where there's smoke, there's fire. You're witty. Most men take their indulgences one at a time. 
Combine them, like women with tobacco, and they pitch fits. <laughs> Pity. You're returning home? Andrew and I wintered in Cairo. Mm. We returned via Paris, where we ran into all sorts of people, including that charming German colonel, Zeitel. He had a great interest in rare books. Oh, did he? It would he? be wonderful to be home. No dust storms, no lepers. Mr. Trask predicts a banner year for me. Trask? Obviously, we've heard his name before because of uh, the Reverend Trout. Trask? A brilliant seer. Brilliant! I consult him about business decisions, and he's never steered me wrong. Hmm. He instructs me to travel on only two ships, the Titanic and the Lusitania. Both of which sank in disasters. So, the Lusitania was actually a casualty of World War I. I must stop our chat here. I have other concerns. My maid, she's left us. Hmm. I'm sorry. Yes, well... Good night. All right. So she will continue to be a thing. Let's talk to ne to Max quickly, though. I don't remember if he has anything else to say at this point. How you doing? You at Fleece, you too? <laughs> you know, you're letting me do all the talking. If you don't mind me asking, just why are you headed to New York? Uh, work. <laughs> Guess we all got our secrets, don't we? See you around, bub. Good night. All right. So, basically just kind of generic conversations. Um, I am going to very quickly go take care of finding out who GQC is for Daisy. I won't find her to tell her for a bit yet, but... Yes, can I help you? Um, I require assistance. Perhaps. As purser, I'm in charge of the Titanic's passengers. Um, may I check the passenger list, please? Have you a name? If you do, I can tell you their cabin number. And here we just have basically any name that you could want to look up whether or not they are in the game or not. So, like, J.J. Astor. The richest man aboard the ship. Um, uh, Conkling, Lambeth, those are all game ones. Um, the hackers, we haven't met them yet. Uh, we haven't met the Gorse jo Joneses yet. Um, goodness gracious, it takes a while to get to it. A passenger with the initials GQC. Let me check. Mr. George Quincy Clifford, A27. All right. Thank you for your help. I live to serve. Uh, good night. Very good, then. Good night. All right. So now... I will take us up the grand staircase. And... We will introduce ourselves to Leyland Trask. Oh, uh, Hello. Don't think we've met. I'm Leyland Sacum Trask, metaphysical scribe and evangelist for the supernatural. Mm. I've been in London attending a conference on premonitions among the sensitive. Um, what is a sensitive? Sensitives or psychics possess increased powers of perception. Hmm. A gifted psychic can take a personal effect from a complete stranger and, and tell you all about them. Um... Are your predictions reliable? There's a range, of course, but given the right training, psychics can reveal information hidden to others. What do you predict for the Titanic? This is a ship of destiny, which I think you know. And that's the first reference that he could be aware of the fact that we've gone back in time. Uh... So, very interesting. He's a fascinating character. I actually, I, I absolutely love him as a character. I do not believe in psychics or anything like that, but I think that the way they treat him is very, very well done. 
Let me have you do a reading of this pipe. Hmm. You know, a medium told me the only danger in my life would come on water. Hmm. Salt or fresh, he did not say. Damn it all, I wish they'd be more specific. <laughs> that pipe's been someplace quite humid recently. I'd visit the Turkish bath. Okay. Good luck. And I will show what that is. I'll 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 show two ways to progress the story effectively. Um, Good night. So I'm going to start off with actually going back to the boat deck. This is probably... A, this version of the game is a little glitchy. I think this is going to put me on the lower deck. Yep. All right. That's fine. Not a big deal. So... We just need to work our way around. So now we can try to go in the wireless room. Oh, but it looks like we're about to get in trouble. Good evening. Third Officer Morrow here. Sorry, the wireless room's off limits to passengers. No passengers allowed. All right. Um, the sea appears calm. Yes, very calm. Ooh. Is there ice this far south? We've received some ice reports. Shouldn't be a problem, though. Not on the Titanic. Indeed. Your watch tonight. Yes, though the only thing to watch is the wireless room. <laughs> they just keep bringing up more messages. Wireless telegraphy is all the rage these days. Um, I'd like to see it sometime. Not tonight, I'm afraid. I've got an uneasy feeling. Something seems wrong. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's try this again. The sea appears calm. Yes. Very calm. Um, it's a clear night, but dark. No moon. I don't like that. Can't see what's coming. No moon means surprises. As if we don't have enough already. Mr. Ismay... The White Star Line's president's on board. Mm -hmm. We're walking eggshells round him, I tell you. <laughs> Though that's nothing compared to the creeping about my brother-in-law's doing at the moment. His entire hmm. London office is in an uproar. What uproar? Tom works in the Admiralty. Seems our plans for troop deployments against Germany disappeared three weeks ago. Hmm. Tom says the big boys are petrified the Jerry's will get wind of it could upset the balance of power. Politics. Desktop espionage. Bureaucrats. Pa, give me the C. You can toss the rest. Okay. Um. You don't care... F uh, you don't like politics? I'm not going to ask about the secret plans or the branch of the Admiralty, because that just... That's asking for trouble. Um. We want to get on Officer Morrow's good side. Never have. Not since the war. Um, what war was that? South Africa. Boer War. The officer was a drinker. Mm. He was drunk when they trapped us out on the veldt. On a moonless night, it mm. was a massacre. We never saw them coming. Drink always leads to the devil. Um, no wonder moonless nights make you jumpy. An interesting connection. For all I know, it could be true. A man's got his troubles, sick child, being away from home. But I hate whiners and apologizers. Well, thank you for your insight. Um, now may I visit the wireless room? Have a look, why don't you? Mind you, Phillips will have my head if he catches you in there. But I don't see any harm. Go on in. All right, so this is the, the way to get... Um, the location of the um, of the Rubaiyat that Penny wanted us to go about. But by talking to Max, we also were able to get Zeidel's, um pipe, as you may remember. So I am going to 
head downward. I'm first, actually, I'm gonna talk to the lift attendant. Evening, I'm the lift attendant. And you'll not find one better at taking you where you want to go. Where to? Sounds good. I need directions. At your service. Um, more locations. We're going to the Turkish bath. Take my lift to D deck. Take the doors beneath the stairs. Walk down three flights. Can't miss it. Now where to? All right. Take me to D deck reception. Mind the gaze. Up a bit late, aren't you? Just like Mr. Conklin. He's a night owl too. Mm. Just a little ways more. So he's uh, an interesting character, to say the least. But let's go down. We are just going to go down here to the Turkish bath. So this is where Mr. Trask advised us to go. We can turn this on to steam up the room. Take a look here. Sasha, left Rubaiyat in Boiler Room 3, Coal Shoot 4. Will send my man for the painting. So. Fun little bit of information there. And we smartly wiped it away. Apparently. So. We can go back on up. And I am still going to decipher the telegram that we got, just because we don't know for sure that it is precisely about the Rubaiyat. And also just to show you what the look of the decoding is. So, here's our cryptograph. Power it on. Then we have our telegram. So we are going to align the numbers in this black outline here. And four. And then we just type it out. So A N H Q S P P A I X W. F-C-X-Y-A-M And we will decode it. Rubaiyat hidden in Boiler Room 3, Coal Shoot 4. SB will deliver painting after pickup. Will confirm. Zaitel. Alright. So, now we can start heading to Penny and take care of this. I will very quickly uh take the time to run into Daisy again, just because it's always fun dealing with Daisy. Did you get it? Get his name? Yes, it's George Quincy Clifford. Clifford? Clifford? Never heard of him. You don't suppose he's rich, do you? Uh, or merely stinking. <laughs> You're an angel. And I've news for you, too. While you were gone, Andrew Conkling's been asking for you. Yes, Conkling, the steel baron. God knows what he's been doing in Europe, buying it, probably. And... Where oh, was boy. I? Oh, yes. Andrew Conkling asked me to pass along this. You know his wife, Beatrix, the designer? Such an eye! Her clothes preserve the bust line. Couldn't be more flattering. Keeps the eye moving. Much nicer than Worth's. Gotta love Daisy's observations. You know his wife. They're friends with Captain Smith. Smith! So handsome, so dashing. White Star's best officer. Or was. He's retiring after this voyage. Couldn't be more tragic. My dear, you've blanched. Bad news. Good night. Certainly, certainly. I must... It's Mrs. Bullbank! Consuelo! And another passage of time. We'll see what that puts us at. 
So now it is 10 o'clock. So, very interesting. The, I'll actually demonstrate it for you that the time does not change until we reach certain narrative beats. Um, but, let's go out to the boat deck. We'll deal with Conkling later. Don't need to deal with him right now. Oh, I always do that. I, I end up going forward when I want to go aft and aft when I want to go forward. <laughs> that actually technically probably was the right thing for me to do though, because I don't think there are steps on the aft part of the promenade deck. Um, I think we're going to run into Trout again at this point. Maybe. Yep, there he is again. Let's, uh, let's give him a chat. Just a minute. Calling on Miss Pringle. She has been invaluable this voyage. A pillar. Hmm. Oh yes, we're very glad she's with us. They say you met Trask. Mm-hmm. Um, he seems like an interesting fellow. Be wary of him. Trask's a trickster. Take this card, a prayer card, hmm. from my own collection. All right, anything else? So you must like this section of the Titanic. What section do you mean? Here, second class. Hmm. You can get to Scotland Road from here. Do you know it? Scotland Road? Uh, yes, I know it. Good night. Wait, before you leave, you mentioned that you approved of our work at the mission in Nyasaland. I'd like to add your name to our list of financial backers. Hmm. An auspicious honor. Oh, yes. Uh, no, not now. Sorry to have bothered you. Perhaps another time. Good evening. And Scotland Road is a is on E-Deck. We saw an entrance to it in the uh, in the first class reception, actually. Um, and that is where uh, an easy way to get from the back of the ship to the front of the ship. So, let's go see. Brilliant! You've Penny. got the drop location. The boiler rooms. Blast! There's an entrance to the lower decks around here somewhere. Query the lift attendant. He's cheeky, but he knows this ship. Intercept the Rubaiyat before it changes hands. All right, and I'm just going to use the map to show this. So, if we go down one level from where we are, we have the boiler rooms. So, we'll just do this. And this will get us down. And we will have to do a little finagling with a crew member again. What the? A passenger? I can't regulate the steam for boilers one and two. So I don't have time for you. You're where you shouldn't be. Get up top before you're kicked up there. Uh, perhaps I can solve that problem for you. Or uh, I'm on official business. I'm just going to say that because that is literally what it is. Oh, with White Star, are you? I'm glad you've come. <laughs> I've got some serious problems with this control panel. Perhaps I can solve that problem for you. Oh, I doubt it. She's really acting up. See? Still working the bugs out of her. See for yourself. I'll help you. Have at it. There's a gauge showing the turbine's power output. The needle's got to move into the green zone. Over here. All right. And this is actually an incredibly simple puzzle. You turn everything counterclockwise as far as it can go. And then you adjust that. I, I remember the first time I played this game, I had so much trouble with it, and then I saw the directions, where if you are having trouble, he'll give you instructions. And you look at the instructions, and it's that simple. That's literally all it says to do. It takes no time, and I it's so easy to struggle so much with this, but as soon as you know how to do it, it's like, wow, so easy. Right smart you were. She's running much smoother now. Say, since you were so interested, 
Go on, have a, have a peek in the engine room. She's quite a sight. Wonderful. That is just what I needed. So... We are going to Boiler Room 3 and Coal Chute 4. And there's a person. You are a passenger. Excuse me, I would speak with you. Uh, what do you want? Forgive me, I am sorry to intrude on you, a person of such high station. I am Vlad. Um, what are your troubles? I have men. I am leaving my home. I am a Serb and they have killed my wife, mm. my children, the Austrians. For mm. that, they will pay. But I do not want to burden you. Please, I need a favor. I have a friend in first class, in cabin A14. Mr. Bobicon has a package for me. Can you bring it here? Um, can't you get it yourself? Me? Enter first class like this? No, they would catch Vlad. What's your friend's name? His name is Barbicon, in A14. Tell him you've come from Vlad. He will give you the package. I wait here for your return. Your assistance will be repaid manifold. That's nice and foreboding. And another passage of time. I forgot that that was a that one was in such quick succession. But he obviously is up to something, being in this boiler room. So there's the Rubaiyat. And we're just gonna switch the chute that it's in. Now we can go check on Vlad's package. And this is one of those things I could go either way. This way, I'm going out the way that I came back. That way, I'm not getting lost. I am going to go see Georgia just because Actually, we'll start off with Lord talking B. to Penny. What are you doing back here? Find that blasted book. I met a stowaway named Vlad in the boiler room. I'll see if I can dig something up on him. He may be down there looking for the Rubaiyat. Mm -hmm. I suggest you find out. Good advice. Intercept the Rubaiyat before it changes hands. All right, then. I'm going to do a, a quick jump, because we can jump to the red areas. And just for simplicity's sake, I just would like to do this. Because I do want to finish off the episode with talking to Georgia before... Uh, oh, oh dear. say, what's your step? Are you hurt, Henry? No harm done. No harm. I'm so sorry. Try to my toe. Mm. We're the Goss Joneses from Halt Whistle, you know. How are you finding the crossing? And these two I, will appear when you fast jump places. I completely forgot about them. But, um... Very nice, thank you. You're English, then. I would have thought American. Oh, my, my. I didn't mean to insult you. Can't hold a thought. Dreadfully large place, America. Brain like as if she's got all that space <laughs> and all those immigrants trying to fill it up. I was just commenting to Henry. On a white star crossing, one meets all the right people. While we were just chatting with a delightful elderly couple in the reception, the Strausses, wasn't mm. that right? Own a small dry goods store in New York somewhere called Macy's. On D deck. Rabina, must you <laughs> always finish my sentences? You're as jumpy as that American chap, that photographer. Yes, he was just snapping away. Hmm. Taking pictures of some German colonel and, and that Englishman. Snap, snap, snap. War's coming, all right. Mark my words. War? How beastly. Will Mr. Burns have to fight? He and his wife, such sweet things. But I do see her point. It is their honeymoon. Hmm. Why he insists on snapping those photos, I haven't a clue. For God's sake, woman, talk, 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 like a madam in a Rangoon boardy house. Ooh. Henry, that's unspeakable. So don't speak then. Oh, that's boy. louder than a scrum of rabid corgis. <laughs> now see here, this Burns chap. If you want to see something interesting, take a look at his pictures. He's on sea deck. Cabin C, 78. Okay. And hopefully that'll be helpful to us. I am going 
to go and see Georgia to finish off the episode. Because... There we are. Oh, wait. Do I have to see her again somewhere else before she invites me to the cabin? That might be what it is. Ugh, I can't keep it all straight. Um... I do want to see her. Ah, yes, there we are. There she is. So, this will be what we end the episode with. I knew you'd come. What happened? Charles received a telegram from the solicitors. Our estate's to be sold off. He asked about the necklace I gave you. I told him I left it with a purser. Don't say anything to him or Sasha. Not him and his group of... Oh, there's much more to tell you. Can you meet me in my stateroom? I'm in B-70. It's Charles' custom to go for a drink in the smoking room. When he does, visit me. All right. So, we will check the smoking room at the start of next episode to see if Charles is there. Then we will speak to Georgia in her room. Then we will collect um, the... Uh, the, the package for Vlad and get it back to him and hopefully he will not have found the Rubaiyat. But until then everybody, this is your game professor signing off. Thank you as always for watching and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you always know when I have new videos coming out. Follow the links in the description to the Facebook page and Discord server so you can join the conversation. But until next time everybody, this is your game professor signing off. <laughs>